like hot chicks. Oh, hi there. And hot trucks. Then this show is for you, because it's smoking. It's indeed a sport for the entire family here at the 20th anniversary four-wheel jamboree at the Allen County Fairgrounds in Lima, Ohio. Hello, everyone. I'm Claude Wood, and welcome to this edition of World of Trucks. Today, it's all about show. It's all about shine. And what a perfect example I have found with Greg Snyder and his 70 International. Greg, how long have you owned it? Uh, we've had the Scout since 1970 or 1997 and went through a phase of buildup. We got it. It was in rough condition. It had been a mail vehicle in western Colorado um, used to deliver mail. We got it, stripped it off the frame, totally redid it. It's been a huge family get-together. My brother, my two sons, grandson, my wife, everybody's been a huge help, friends. It's To me, it's a big family get-together. And your family's been helping you quite some time with this. Yes, they have. Um, we're into the third generation family now, going to the truck shows. My grandson started coming this year. We made him a special little project just for this show. Um, we're all sort of keyed about that, and uh, we're just all hanging out together, having a good time. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Take me on a tour through the Scout. What was it like when you first got it? You did most of the work too, right? Right. Uh, paint was pretty faded. Uh, body, metal-wise, was in very good shape. We used all the original metal. Um, straighten some of it where obviously they'd hit um, mailboxes, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, polished up all the chrome, spent many, many hours, you know, getting it prepped for paint. Spent probably 30 hours taping it off to get it masked just for the flames. Um, we've got six coats of clear coat on it, all Sherwin-Williams product. Um, just an overall project. We had to design part of the suspension ourselves. We did spring over lift. We've got 10 inches of lift on it. Uh, running 373 gears, um, tools down the road just like we'd planned. Greg, thanks for bringing it out. Want to see more gorgeous trucks? We can do that for you. Doc Riley, I think he's right over there. No, it is not the latest science fiction movie. It is a 2005 beautiful diesel truck, and this is an incredible platform right here. Carl's got it all worked out, and I tell you, the attention to detail is outstanding. Carl, let's talk a little bit about this. First of all, you're making model. Well, it's a 2005 uh, F-250 Ford Super Duty. It was a project that we started coming up with for uh, SEMA this year. And uh, what I want to do is just uh, put an 05 together and uh, I can see the graphics. It's the future. What, is that the inspiration, the future? Yes, sir. Uh, air ride suspension, uh, that's our manufacturing. And uh, we're trying to show everybody what we can do with it. And here's the new product. You know, are, are people starting to kind of um warm up to airbags a little bit. I mean, there's a lot that can be done with airbags. What about some of the features? What's a good thing that an airbag can do as opposed to other parts of suspension? Air ride suspension is a real nice feature with a, uh, you can carry the load. You don't have a spring squat. You don't get the uh, headlights pointing in the sky. And uh, you get a real comfortable ride with the air ride. Um, it's like riding a little F-150 pickup. And you've got a nice shock package all the way around too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Bill Stein's done a real nice job putting the uh, shocks together for us and helping us valve them. The interior, very nice. You've got all the latest uh, creature comforts of the new age. Oh, absolutely. You know, we can go around, we can watch our DVDs and DVDs, uh, you know, the, the, the stereo stuff in there, lots of stuff in there. Now, I'm going to ask you the question. I need, a, I need a straight, honest answer. Daily driver? Absolutely. Got to ride them. Drove it all the way out from Iowa. All the way from Iowa, coming out to celebrate a 20th anniversary here at the Lima Jamboree. Everything goes on from nice racing to great looking trucks. And Doc, a part of the four wheel Jamboree, the burnout contest. Up first will be Isaac Dockery in his 2001 Chevy 2500. Now joining me in the booth today, expert analyst Rick Carlson. Rick. Come in and give us a little 411 on a burnout contest. Mickey Thompson burnout contest. Each driver gets 30 seconds to thrill the crowd, smoke and sound. It has to be a stock chassis, DOT approved tires with at least one eighth inch tread depth, automatic transmission, no nitrous or funny fuels, and they can smoke the entire area. And the horn you heard there indicates the end of Isaac's 30 seconds. The crowd approves. And that will bring up 
Kenny Clouds and his 78 Dodge Ram. Kenny Clouds, that Dodge going to smoke the tires. Mention that horn a little bit. The drivers with uh, the engine revved up, tough to hear anybody say stop, so they use that horn and, and they'll beep him at the end of the 30. Doesn't look like we're getting the same smoke from Kenny that we got out of Isaac's truck. That Dodge not smoking him or lighting him up like the Chevy did. He's working on it though. World of Trucks is being brought to you by Stainless Steel Brakes. Performance brakes built right by Stainless Steel Brakes and by Lund. Get the look. Welcome back to the World of Trucks from the 30th anniversary four-wheel jamboree right here in Lima, Ohio. Just about any make, model, color, description of truck is on display in the car show area today, or today, the truck show area. Take a look at this gorgeous 1992 Toyota. Well, it started out not exactly looking like this, Roger, so what gives here? Well, we just kind of wanted a, a show truck, and she said she wanted one that would compete, so we kind of tore a stock Toyota down, and five years later, here she, here's what she looks like, so. All right, Tammy, when you started out, you told Roger, I want a show truck, so does this meet all of your uh, requirements? Yes, and then some. <laughs> it is very nice. Won any awards? Yes, lots of them. Came Frank from a grand champion to best paint, best engineered, uh, about everything that you think you can win, we have won it one time or another. All right, they say it is never finished. Is it finished? No, <laughs> never. It is a toy that will never be done. Uh-oh, Roger's shaking his head. So what's going to come next? Well, I think we're going to get into the pulling side of the, the circuit and buy us a pulling truck, a modified pulling truck, and try that. Well, wait a minute. What happens to the Toyota? Are you going to sell that? Yes, I think we're going, to, we're going to try to sell it, but if it doesn't happen, I'm not worried about it. It, it, it can sit in the garage. Her smile went away when we said that. <laughs> I don't think she wants to sell it. No. <laughs> All right, don't listen, Roger. You're going to sell the truck? No. It's not for sale, really. <laughs> <laughs> While they work this out, we'll go to the dock. He's on the grounds right over there. Custom show trucks. They come in all shapes and sizes and styles and colors, and this caught my eye because it's a beautiful, beautiful ride, and I like the saying. The license plate's also good, too. More about that in just a second. But let's get over here, and let's meet the driver, the owner. Is this a daily driver? Yes, it is. And uh, where are you from? Valparaiso, Indiana. Gwen, tell me a little bit about the Jeep. What year? It's a 97 CJ Wrangler. Daily driver? You know it. What else do you do with it? Uh, pick up guys. Pick up that? guys? What, did you do any off-roading with it? No, not yet. I'm waiting to get the LS1 dropped in at the end of the summer. Wow, going to put an LS1 in it. What do you got in it now? Four banger. Ah, that just doesn't work, does it? No, I did pretty much 55 miles per hour for five hours. It mm, sucked. That's not, that's not good. That's <laughs> it was not, not good. fun at all. You know, it's it's vibrant and colorful, and uh, you know, what else have you done to the truck to kind of get it up to your style? Well, basically, I bought it as a stock truck, you know, and uh, as soon as I bought it, I had a four-inch lift kit with a three-inch body put on it, put some stickers on it, put some basher bumpers, a little bit of chrome. That's about it. I mean, it looks good. And a little color in the interior. Just a little purple for purple because I'm a purple girl. You're a purple girl. a purple girl. Well, it's fun. You like the jamborees? I love the jamborees. You have no idea how fun these are. Now, for a young lady like yourself, why not some little hot sports car, some little thing that just doesn't seem like it kind of fits your style, though? I love rednecks. <laughs> I do. I love the rednecks. I love just hanging out with the guys and just partying and enjoying everybody else's trucks, seeing what they did. Everybody has a different style. So that's why I like to look for what everybody's different qualities are and what they're looking for. Style and color, and she wrapped it all up, didn't she? Meanwhile, Rick, let's get back to the burnout contest. Jason Shaw coming up now in his 2002 Chevy 2500, trying to inspire the crowd a little. And you need to inspire the crowd because this contest is judged on crowd response. They have a meter so they can get an accurate reading for each one of the competitors, and he's just trying to get them going. They're making some noise. Yeah, they show their approval. Well, up next will come Jeff Golden and his 2001 Ford F-350. Here he goes. It says 4x4 on the side, but you can only use the back tires. That's the only thing you can use in the burnout contest. They have the front end chock, so that truck doesn't try and run away while they're smoking the tires. Well, there used to be a Ford in there in the middle somewhere. Jeff doing a good job. It's not quite golden. It's now all smoky.
Toot toot. Well, one of the true pleasures of being in a four-wheel jamboree is that the latest and greatest in aftermarket products can be found right on the performance marketplace. And another nice treat is to have someone like Richard Small here from Flowmaster. Welcome to the jamboree. Well, thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, a little wet, but you know what? It's a truck show. It's a great weather if you're a duck. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't seem to be bothering anybody, though. They're all out here in great numbers. You know, listen about Flowmaster, talk about Flowmaster, that signature sound and everything else, but you guys have got an incredible product line and it doesn't seem like it doesn't ever stop. You guys just continue to come up with new innovative ideas. What about the world of trucks? Well, we've got a lot of exciting things going on. We've got the Super 40 we just brought out. We've got the uh, Hush Power 2. We've got uh, five inch stuff for the big diesel boys. We've got uh, four inch, uh, about anything you want, we've got it. Where does this come from? Do you guys react to the market, or do you kind of uh, work in concert with the, the new products that come out from the from the manufacturers? A lot of it actually comes from here. We listen to people. We want we want to know what they want, and then we go back and see what we can do about it. And so far, we've been pretty successful at it. Well, we will continue to keep our eye on Flowmaster because they continue to listen to people and keep their eye on the ever-changing truck world. So again, keep watching the Outdoor Channel for that next big news from the exhaust technology company, Flowmaster. Stay with us. More unique creations from Lima on World of Trucks when we come back. Welcome back to the World of Trucks on a chilly day in Lima, Ohio. I'm Claude Wood and every make and model out there, including some great looking vans. Take a look at this gorgeous 1992 Ford Aerostar that's owned by Terry Sy. All right, first of all, why an Astro van? Well, we haven't seen any other ones built other than the, uh, the Bigfoot one years ago, and that gave us the idea. And then after uh, going through all the shows and the jamborees year after year, we had bought the van new, and we had the pickup truck, so we wanted something different. So we uh, evolved into the uh, minivan series and just kept jacking it up, and this is where we're at right now. What's the deal with all those models back there? Uh, some of them are signed by the drivers that own the trucks, so, and my child was into it and has grown up around it, so that's why we, you know, have the uh, little series in them, you know, of what you see back there. I saw a NASCAR type net there. You really need that? Uh, possibly not, but it, but it all looks good. All right, take me through the truck. Let's start with the power plant. Okay, the power plant is a, uh, a Chevrolet 350 block. And then we had the uh, drag racing uh, in our state built the motor for us, and it's actually a 383 stroker motor. Uh, it runs about 500 horsepower. Uh, it is a carbureted engine, and it runs the MSD ignition. Uh, it is a 350 turbo automatic with a 3500 RPM stall converter, and then it drops down into a uh, Ford uh, 205 gear-driven transfer case into Ford uh, one-ton axles. Uh, it has the hydraulic power steering in the front like a monster truck, and then it's got all the Rancho suspension underneath it, you know, the shock and all that and, and then the other stuff is for cosmetics looks you know bright colors and all that interior looks great uh, the interior we left pretty basically stock we didn't really want to mess up you know by cutting it all up and all that but mm -hmm. uh, we tried to keep it look more you know the Ford Aerostar look and uh, it turned out pretty good any idea after all this work how much time have you spent on this thing uh, probably uh, 5,000 hours something like that just a lot of hours, you know, of trial and error to get it to look this good. And uh, we just, we keep working on it all the time. In between shows, we work on it and paint it up and color it and, you know, dress it up and make it look good. And money-wise, you've probably thrown away all the receipts. Uh, I have a lot of the receipts, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's some we don't have. There is a lot of money in it. Well, it's certainly different, and you're to be congratulated for bringing it out. Thanks for bringing it out all today. Right. Meanwhile, back at the burnout contest in his 99 Ford F-150, this is Everett Mowry from right here in Lima. Oh, and he was concentrating on either the speedometer or the tachometer. And he's going to have to get some smoke up. Don't hear much noise from the crowd. You get one tire going. I can't even see if he has smoke coming off the other tire. It must be. There's some smoke coming underneath there. Now we're starting to move something. Don't know, Claude. I don't think he's as good as some of the others. 
a valiant effort and rick according to the rules you must use an automatic transmission of course it would be a, a little easier if that were a stick shift well that will bring up aster mullins from bloomville ohio and 88 caddy limousine are you kidding me well he must have it on some type of different chassis it's got eight lug pattern on the back and uh, the most unique car that's about it certainly different it's time now for product highlights which features some of the most interesting and innovative aftermarket products for your truck. Now, here's Bill Stevens. Hey, on this product highlight, we want to talk about one of America's favorite pastimes, and that's tailgating. If you've been to any major league sport, you know, out in the parking lot, hours before the event begins, whether it's a ball game or an automobile race, people are tailgating. They're pulling out the coolers with the brewskis and the barbecue grills and having a great time. Well, the people from Freedom Grill have a terrific and clever way to go tailgating. Scott Salter is with Freedom Grill. Tell us about this amazing rig here. Sure thing. We have uh, created the ultimate tailgating grill. It goes in the two-inch receiver hitch, virtually any vehicle, truck, SUV, that can uh, have a hitch attached to it. Our product goes into that hitch, you drive with it on. A lot of folks don't realize you actually drive with it outside the vehicle. With the new vehicles that are coming out today, they're more and more expensive. They're putting in the third row seats, there's less space. And who really wants to put a greasy, smelly grill on the back of a $30,000 or $40,000 SUV? So we've created the ultimate tailgating grill that enables people to be able to put it outside their vehicle, drive to the game, swing it out, cook on it, swing it back closed, drive home, and then take it off and put it on the backyard stand, which we include with the package. So it's not only a tailgating grill, it's their home grill as well. Now, how much would something like this cost? These retail for $799. That's all stainless steel grill, the arm assembly, and the backyard stand, weatherproof cover, all in. Hey, no wonder Freedom Grill calls itself the official grill of tailgating. And I only have one thing to say after that. Let's party. World of Trucks is being brought to you by Jet Rack, the world's best interior sliding rail ladder rack system. And by Street Shades by Rosen, visual solutions for complex environments. Welcome back to the World of Trucks. This is the 20th anniversary of the four wheel jamboree on a chilly day here in Lima, Ohio. You gotta love Jeeps. I mean, for many, many years, going back to World War II, the workhorse. But Terry Hunt, this one doesn't work all that much, but it sure is gorgeous. Uh, it spends most of its life in a trailer. Uh, I got it in about 1988. It belonged to a guy that got married and had to get rid of it. His wife said it was not a family vehicle, and that's when I purchased it. It's just kind of kept growing ever since then. I got it as a senior in high school, and each year we've kind of gotten a little crazier with it or more radical. and. This is what it's become over the years, and I just show up pretty much on a regular basis for the last five or six years. I took fifth in the world in my power class on the ASCA circuit in 94, and I've got about 1,500 watts of radio in it and amplifiers and, oh, 15, 16 different types of speaker drivers inside the vehicle itself. It's got a small block 350 in it. I've since since 88, I've added a 95 TJ frame and a small block 350, so. All right, tell me about the paint. That is Harlequin, right? Yeah, it's made by PPG. It's their Harlequin colors, and what it is is chopped up prisms inside the paint. And it depends on the angle of the light and the height that you're sitting and what color it's, it'll actually do. It's about $55 an ounce without any hardeners or clear coat. So it's pretty expensive, and it's just kind of something different, so that's what I chose to do. All right, is this your first modification? Uh, no, each year I've always shown it. I've just added a little bit more each year. Five years ago, I started with the outside of the body and then we went to underneath and changed the suspension and added the V8 and stuff like that. It originally started out as I was showing the radio consistently and got kind of burnt out on that and realized this was a lot more fun to do, so. Over the years, any idea how many man hours you've put in on this? Oh God, I couldn't even guess. I got a buddy that owns a body shop and he's helped me out a bunch too. His name's Jim Bees at Custom Auto and Audio in Union, Missouri. So I appreciate all the help he's given me. And I had uh, Cars Upholstery do my interior for me out of Hazelwood in St. Louis, Missouri, so. It's a real head turner. Anybody come up to you and offer to buy it? Uh, I haven't really had that happen in a couple of years. The first year I had it out, some guy offered me way too much for it. And I should have taken it, and I was just glad to have it for its first year out, so I didn't do it, and I wish I would have. <laughs> All right, they say they're never done. Is this one done? 
I keep saying it, but I still would like to do a blower motor in it. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, thanks for bringing it out today. Great looking Jeep, and you know, there are a lot of other great looking vehicles here. In fact, Doc Riley found one right over there. When you come to a four wheel jamboree, usually you see a Bronco in a tough truck configuration, but Mike, this is a very nice looking piece, and I guess it, it just didn't happen overnight, did it? No, it didn't. Uh, it took me about eight and a half years. Really, eight and a half years, and uh, really the attention to detail is very good. What's the year making model? Uh, it's a 1968 Bronco and uh, Ford Bronco, I guess I should say. Uh, it's got a 351 Windsor in it with some aluminum heads um, and uh, couldn't have been accomplished without a lot of help from a lot of friends. And the inside looks good. You've got nice gray there and it's accented by the purple roll bar. The nice on the seat, you've got the Bronco there, the nice inserts in the back also say Bronco out there. Uh, very, very nice, so just kind of, um, why did it take eight years? Just looking for the perfect things to slap on a truck? Um, yeah, just, uh, you know, it took that long. Uh, sometimes you got to wait for quality work and uh, uh, some decisions just take some time, you know, and you get a lot of money tied up in a truck like this to where, uh, you know, you want to um, you want to just take your time doing it and make sure that when you do it, you do it right. And that will bring up our final contestant in the burnout contest. This is Lance Lawfrey in his 2000 Dodge Ram. That Dodge Ram, they spent some time. It's got a trick looking paint job. It's, well, when you can see it behind the smoke, pulling up a lot of rubber, and you can see the mud on those front tires as they're chocked with that diesel smoking and the tire smoke for Lance. And he sure has a combination of both, Rick. You mentioned it diesel smoke, a lot of white smoke, but it all depends on what the audience thinks. And there are our final results. Congratulations from the booth to Lance Lawfrey. You just saw him win the burnout contest. If you would like more information on products featured today, log on to these websites. Be sure to join us on World of Trucks next week from Lima, Ohio. It's Monster Trucks. That will put a wrap on this edition of World of Trucks. For Bill Stevens, Doc Riley, and Rick Carlson, Claude Wood, keep on trucking.